mental brilliance between two planets. <laughs> there's, there's some kind of like fabulous, um, well, it, it really is. There's an ingenuity, there's a, there's a mental brilliance that connects those two planets. There's, there's something that's very unique about their connection that could birth something very unusual with those two planets working together. It's a harmonious connection. I happen to have a place on Mercury and my Saturn is in Gemini and Gemini is your only planet is Mercury. So does that have any So you have Saturn quintile Mercury. That's what it says here. Yeah, Saturn quintile Mercury. Well to me that's a great gift because your um your Mercury's in Leo. So to me, that's a great gift because here she is with Saturn in Gemini. So there's a little bit of, do I dare speak out? Do I dare speak out? And yet she's got this link to, that says to, to Mercury and Leo, which is all about speaking out and all about creativity and all about like being seen for how you, you communicate. So it's like a support for you. The more that you can get that Mercury and Leo working, more that like, I believe this, I say this, I think this, I write this, I am my own authority. The more you get that, then you have a zing telephone wire to your Saturn Gemini that says, it's okay to talk. <laughs> it's okay to share what I believe. It's okay to share my, you know, this new, new way of thinking about the world. It's okay to introduce that. Bob? Meet Okay. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, good. Excellent. Um, and is, was there any other Sabian symbol sharing? Yes. Yeah, Robin, yes. It's uh, a priest performing a marriage ceremony. Oh. Okay. And what does it say underneath? The ritualization of productive interpersonal relationships. Sanction. The ritualization of productive interpersonal relationships. I like that for you a lot. Like creating ritual, you know? Uh, mm -hmm. the, 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 the phrase, the only way the gods will hear you is through ritual. <laughs> and, and to he healing interpersonal relationships, even interpersonal mm -hmm. relationships, mom and baby, and mm -hmm. marriage, and, um, and somehow occupying that space of the, the one that performs the ceremony. I totally see you in that priestess divine girl. Doesn't she embody priestess? Priestess divine girl? Yeah, I that's love that. <laughs> T-shirt, <okay. laughs> way or trust that voice that says you see that you fulfill your obligation to yourself see that you travel the course that you need to travel that other Saturn sheet that I gave you is so like it's so Saturn you know the, the uh, see that you do this see that you do that it's got the energy of Saturn in it but you know it, um, well I was thinking about it in terms of your own Capricorn so your own Capricorn you know it, regardless of Saturn and Capricorn, it's like see that you achieve, see that you do what you want to do responsibly, you know, with, with responsibly, see that you collaborate. I mean, are you in a period of transition in your life? Are you in a period of, yeah? totally headstrong, totally like, oh, let's go here, let's do that, oh, let's leave that mountain, you know, that has this sort of like, jump into things, fiery, passionate, burn bright, burn quick, you know, um, and then you also have Cancer Rising, which is deeply feeling and deeply sensitive and wants to build something, or build a home, build community, you know, so you, you can't isolate it, but you can, you can, you know, there's certain traits that you can sort of 
perhaps hinge around, but blended with all the others. But, and, and also the very fact that your ruling planet, Saturn, is in Aquarius, which is totally anti-establishment, would completely color that. In, what? in the eighth, yeah. Let's brainstorm. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. Some of you know about it, you, you know. So take Saturn in Aquarius in the eighth house. Very interesting, very different, because this is the Scorpio house. Okay. Six. So this is the house, okay, this is the house of sex, death, taboo. taboo, transformation, transformation. Okay, now for now, just take the fact, let's, let's eliminate the fact that Aquarius is there, let's just say Saturn in the eighth house. So what are some of the things that we said about if Saturn is in the eighth house, what might happen? Fear of all that stuff. Fear, fear of depth, you know, depth. Yeah. Fear of going to dark places. Going to dark places, excellent. Um, fear of astrology. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She's like, run, scream. No. Yeah. Yes, you know, astrology or metaphysics. Yeah, the eighth house is ruled by that. So, okay. So we have fear, but we also might have, um, but you also might have the compulsion to do all those things, you know, to act on that fear. So you might, like, go ahead and do it anyway, but it might, you know, well, you shake. Um, so, there, and there, you know, another word for Saturn, there can be repression, there can be um, sublimation, you know, those things. Okay, so, okay, won't go there. Um, <laughs> go there. Fear of there. group sex, okay. <laughs> <laughs> or, or if it's your or, shadow, then you could be engaging in any kind of paraphilia of, you know, have, have some kind of fetish. Yeah, you fetish could have, you could, yeah, you definitely, you could have paraphilia. definitely problem, yeah, there can be sexual things, right? But we never know how it's going to manifest to turn in the spiral. But what, what if, okay, let's say now, let's still not talk about Aquarius, but let's say that Saturn at the upper turn of the spiral, and we say we breathe in our authority here, and what happens here then? Great strength or uh, willingness to work at. Work at. Willingness to, willingness to work at. Um, uh, responsibility here, you know, I can't even spell that, responsibility. Um, so you might be a person that takes tremendous responsibility in ushering people through difficult situations. Like once you can process your own fear of certain, you know, hydra, the hydra heads, you can also say the hydra heads, right? Um, then you might be a person that's like, I, I will be here. None of, maybe, maybe you can't handle, maybe this, most of people can't handle being here, but I will be here at your side through this process. Does any of this relate yet? Yes? Okay, good. Um, now, let's try to add the Aquarius in. Let's, what, what are some words for Aquarius? Uh, re rebellious. Rebellious. Unconventional. What else? Independent. Group. Independent. So having unconventional group sex. That every day. Another DVD shirt sell. Okay. Okay. No. So um. So there, but there's some fear of like let's just take the the lower term. Some fear of the unusual or or fear of. You could, you could, this combination alone, you could get really heady about depthy things. Like you could go into your head about them. Or you could try to get really objective about them. Like maybe if I understand these things, I'll feel safer there. These, because these two are so different. Because Aquarius wants to step out and be like, well, it's all, it, it likes to step out of the emotional morass. And it likes to say, maybe if we do this, and if we do this, and if we adjust here slightly. And meanwhile, Scorpio's like, Bleh! you know, and so, you know, it's like engaged in the battle. And Aquarius is like, let's not engage in that battle. Let's step out. Let's be more objective about this. And Scorpio's totally subjective. So you've got these two things going on. It's a very complicated, uh, anybody have any other thoughts about how those might blend? It's, it's, it's hard. It's also like having Uranus sitting here, so the planet of freedom next to the planet of restraint. So actually, you might have this thing in you about like, no, I want to be a total rebel and try everything, and then oh, fear, fear, fear. You know, I'm, I really want to go in depth here and, and break all the rules. Oh my God, no. 
Does that make some sense? Yeah, yeah. It seems like a real struggle between sort of like the id and the superego, you know, the, the drives and all the things, all the dirty things that you want, and yeah. the superego saying, no, 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 that's not okay. And yeah. sort of the battle between those two. Yeah, yeah, that's, a, yeah, because the, the, yeah, our own, would you say that that would be the authority figure? The, the superego super is, is the, the sort of moral. Okay, figure. yeah, so the morality versus the rebel, all in the safe house. And you know, also you could, we could, oh, we didn't say, this is all has to do with financial house too, and this is a totally different take, but you know, um, other people's money, so many stockbrokers have strong eighth houses, so you could have, you know, you have responsibility as well as the high risk factor, do you know? So it's a very unusual kind of investor. Do you invest in the more traditional? Do you invest in the um, more group oriented or socially responsible, do you know? Um, is there anything that you want to, that you could share that, that, that about how that resonates or, and it's okay if you don't, um, but it does resonate. Well, or it does. just that it's a mess. 